I think it's our number one question we ever get asked, isn't it? What, what paper should I be using? Hello, I'm Vince. And I'm Tim. And today we're going to be looking at a whole variety of Photospeed papers, looking at which papers you should be using as an illustrator. I think it's our number one question we ever get asked, isn't it? What, what paper should I be using? In any walk of and... life, in any, <laughs> whether it's photography, art, whatever. Yeah. But particularly, uh, we've noticed that a lot more illustrators are printing now than ever before. Historically, they would yeah. outsource their work. Um, but I feel that with the accessibility of the printers and the variety of the papers, that illustrators are now finding it more, uh, more easy to, to work from home and print their own work. So we're going to cover off uh, probably our, our top papers for replicating uh, artwork. And we've got printed loads here, kind of with kind of generic illustrations, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Paintings and kind of kids stuff and things like that to cover you know, like greetings cards and a bit of everything in here. But I suppose it's a great, they all look absolutely fantastic. I have to say, <laughs> when I was printing these for this video, yes. they've all come out brilliantly. The colors are punchy, the blacks are black um, and the details. Yeah, yeah nice. I mean, we should say we've picked four or five papers for this. Yeah, I think um, it was I think it was five, wasn't it? So we, we've got the Luster Free Ten, the new new Luster Free Ten, uh, Matt Ultra Two Hundred and Forty, uh, Two Hundred and Forty being the GSM. That'd be the same on all of them. Mm. The, the number at the end is the GSM uh, grams per square meter. Uh, the Art Smooth Duo, which is a Great, it's a single sided paper, but also as a double sided paper, which is another newish paper from the range, isn't it? Which has also got short grain direction as well. Yes, so for bookmaking, uh, so. which is in another video. Or cards, if you're folding cards, perfect for that yeah. as well. And then from the the art paper side of things, we've got the natural soft texture bright white and the natural texture bright white, um, which are all firm favourites for art reproduction and illustration work, really. They're, our fav they're kind of our favourites and our, our pick that we would kind of recommend. recommend. Yeah, exactly. um, however, we do have a lot more papers in our range. And yes. if you find another paper that works, we won't take offence, don't worry. Um, but this is to give you a good kind of Overview, starting yeah. point. Yeah, and, yeah, I mean, you can look at test packs. We've got the four test mm. packs. We've got the photo range with the everyday gloss luster and inexpensive matte papers. We've got the, the fine art glossy which is the sort of the higher end of fine art glossy papers than the matte smooth and the matte textured. So it's always a good way, a good starting mm. point, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, like I so said, we've picked our sort of favourites and what we found to be most popular and reproduced the best yeah, sort and what, of colour. I suppose results. what our existing customers as well, kind of yeah. illustrate kind of are, are using as well and yeah. have come some really good results on it. Yeah. So so where do we start? Should we start with the luster? Yeah, I think three ten. So, yeah. I mean that would be a great one, which is just yeah. what this one here. Um, again, it's a, it's a fairly new paper, isn't it, the 310 for us? We've had the t um, Luster 275. Yeah, it's been arranged for a long time. So we've got long Luster time. 190, a real lightweight sort of poster style paper. The 275, which is a, a staple in our range now for the last, must be 20 odd years, it's sort of, perhaps now. Um, and then the, uh, the new addition to the range, the Luster 310 which has just got that extra bit of weight mm. and sort of luxurious feel yeah. to it. It's got a bright white point, uh, great for deep blacks, great for punchy colours. Um, and with the sheen, it just makes the image sort of pop off the page. Yeah. It's going to match the screen a little bit easier because of that sheen as well, because yes. most screens have either a glossy or a certain sheen to them, don't they? Yeah. Um, this is a really nice one to actually make it match the screen a little bit if you're really crucial on colour and things. This one will help that because of its white base as well. And yeah, that's true. I mean, generally printing on a gloss or luster paper is is easier for that reason. Uh, whereas a matte paper, that that profile that we make suddenly becomes a bit more crucial, doesn't it? Now we should add that color profiles are highly recommended yes. by us, and we would kind of advocate that you use them. Now it is a free service we offer, so each of our papers comes with a, a free service where we will give you free custom profiles as well. So if you've got your printer, then we want to be able to get the best color out of that printer. So we want to match between the screen and the print. A profile in essence tells the printer what to do, which is great yeah. because a, a printer doesn't really know what it's doing. If you're getting bad results, it's probably because it's being told 
the wrong information. Um, important things are monitor calibration, which we also supply from data color and calibrite. So getting the colors right on screen is vitally important if you're reproducing artwork. If the colors are wrong on the screen, it's going to come out wrong every time on the printer. Second part is the paper profile. Now the paper profile, that Tim's already touched on, we offer this free of charge. You'll probably notice that most paper manufacturers have a series of generic profiles. A generic profile is, is a kind of a canned profile that is designed for your printer with our paper, but it's not your specific printer, it's that model of printer. And any electronic device interprets information differently. So a custom profile it, we can make for you for your printer and you would just print out the test chart that's available on our website, mm. post it to us, and we will scan it in what's called a spectrophotometer and make a profile. And that applies to every single finish of paper. So each paper interprets information slightly differently because of the white point, the texture, the ink receiving layer, or even the sheen. Um, so it's, all, it's, it's vitally important, but most importantly, it is free. So any of our papers that we supply from Photospeed, um, we can offer that service free of charge and if you're still a little bit unsure about the whole process we can offer a remote login can't we yeah so we can take that stress away and take control of the mouse and do it all for you and even install it at the other end but um yeah in order to get good results you need to calibrate the monitor and you need to have your papers profiled for consistency and that'll give you yeah the best results to be honest and less yes. frustration as well because i'm sure you agonize over the color palettes mm. and getting that right color that works with your designs and things and there's nothing worse than when you print it and it comes out looking bit flat, different bit flat bit yeah. of a color cast or your customer's seen it online and then it arrives and it's a slightly different color. things like that but those are quite crucial i think well yeah i mean customer experience yeah. is that most important thing so obviously picking the right paper is is important but getting the profile right and getting the mm. color output correct because there's no bigger critic of your own work than you. I mean, you're, you're probably creating these lovely designs in your studio at home, whether you're, you're painting them or you're creating digital art and then they're coming out nothing like you see them on the screen. So that profile means that you're happy and you're happy printers and you're not wasting four, five, six sheets at a time to get one result. You're getting it perfect every time. Mm. Now I must stress that this is within the limitations <laughs> of the printer. Obviously there are different printers out there, which will be a, a video coming up mm. um, is it, at some point yes. soon as well. Um, picking the right printer, because if you're using, uh, I hate to say cheap, but an inexpensive printer that you picked up from Argos or wherever <laughs> uh, for 40 pounds, you're not gonna get great results. Um, consistent results and will probably be very inefficient way of printing. So I would consider getting the right printer as well yeah. as the right paper. Um, like Vince said, we're going to do a whole video on printers as Correct. well because it's a whole it's, new mindset. It, it is, yeah, <laughs> it can be. I mean, yeah. you look on our website, there's loads of printers. But yeah. let's get back to the paper back because to that's, papers, that's what, we're here, what we're here for. So, yeah. like we said, Luster, I mean, the 310 feels amazing in hand. It's light, heavyweight, feels fantastic. That high white point as yeah. well. Um, matte, but should we have a look at the matte ultra? As well? Yeah, I was going to say, but the luster generally isn't isn't for everyone, is it? In some cases, no. So I mean, for artwork reproduction, person, I prefer a matte paper, um, unless yeah. it's like an oil painting or something. I'd, I'd much prefer a matte paper. It's you, you're not distracted by the paper; you're distracted by the image, which is obviously <laughs> the crucial part. So we have got so the matte ultra, the matte ultra. which is probably our sort of. One of our biggest selling yeah. papers. And we honest. do it in a duo version as well, don't we, Matt Duo? Yeah, so again, for if you're doing cards and things like that, we do photo cards or even books. Uh, the Matt Duo uh, works very well. And actually, the Luster comes in a duo, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Uh, I think, I have to say, the Matt, the Matt Ultra is probably one of my favourite papers, actually, because it, yeah. it is, it's a lovely paper. Yeah. It's a good price point as well, yeah. I think you'd agree. It, it's, it's, it's inexpensive and it's available in bulk options as well, in cut sheet and of course, roll media um, up to 60 inches. Mm. Um, I think because of the nice bright white base, it just becomes an easy paper to print on. Uh, you get nice deep blacks, nice punchy colours. Um, and again, the image still pops off the page, which yeah. is quite a rare thing for a matte paper really, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is lovely. It, um, it's almost like, yeah, the ink, Although it's using the matte black and things, the ink almost it 
it responds like it's on a luster or something. So it's almost, it doesn't soak in as much, does no. it? It kind of just, some can, can sometimes happen in cotton papers that we'll talk about in a bit. But like you said, it's those bright colours. I mean, it handles like this bright yellows and things in here really, really well, really nicely. Yes, it's, um, it's crisp and sharp. It's great. It yeah. Just, uh, yeah, just an easy paper to work mm. with. I guess the one slight downside would be the weight. So it's mm. a 240 GSM, as we said earlier, so there is a bit of car factor to it. Um, whereas some of the art papers we'll come on to in a minute just feel that little extra special. Um, Matt Ultra's uh, Alpha Cellulose product, so cleanse wood pulp. Mm. Um, we have got some cotton rag options as well we're going to go for it. Yeah, um, but it is pH neutral and things like that. It's Acid art free. certified as yeah. well. Um, it, it, as long as it's printed with pigment inks. Um, you have that archival um, quality yeah. um, if you're selling the work. So that's, that's quite important. Yeah, it's just lovely. It's just a lovely paper. It just does what it says, doesn't yeah. it, really? It's um, it's quite a nice paper, really. Yeah. But so let's got, go. Should we go? Is it the Art, art Smooth? Yeah, I was going to say, let's go to the Art Smooth. Which is, um, uh, is a nice, warm matte paper. It feels out. very similar in weight and structure to the matte ultra, uh, but it almost feels more like a... True art mm. paper, I would say. It's got, got a little heavier. stipple, a little bit of texture to it, very subtle. Um, although officially it's a, I think it's a two, two ten, two twenty GSM. Yeah, two twenty. Stock. Two ten. Um, it just feels like it's got a bit more backbone to it. So it's probably calendared slightly differently when it's it's made. Um, for for certain images, uh, the warm base just sort of uh, it, works a bit of quality. Yeah, it, you I can think. see the warm base here. I do some close ups as well. But um, it is slightly warmer, yeah. so it suits certain images a little bit more. However, the warmer base, I think it adds a little bit of pop to some images as well in, in some way, um, certain colours. Yeah, like I, this I think warmth it all, in here works really nice. It all depends on the artwork you, you're producing. If it's sort of graphic, uh, punchy colours, I would still probably lean towards a brighter white mm. base, like the, the matte, uh, matte Ultra and the Luster and the uh, natural, top, natural Texture Bright White we're going to come to in a bit. But for a, a piece of artwork, um, like the spare image in particular, I, I really think the, the art smooth works quite mm. well for that. Almost lends itself more towards the true yeah. artwork. And it really does feel lovely when you can just imagine your customer unwrapping it and it's just, it feels beautiful in the, in the hand. Yeah, yeah it just feels really nice compared to say a matte ultra, but yeah. still lovely paper matte ultra, but this is getting into kind of that fine art, heavyweight kind of paper. Yeah, I'd almost say it sort of bridges the gap between photo, photo, mm. fine art, because it doesn't have that fine art cost, uh, but it does have that fine art look and feel. Yeah, it's a really, really popular paper. Like I said, it's it's duo as well, yeah. and it's also got that short grain direction as well, so it yeah. folds really nicely, easy, if you were putting things into books or anything. Yeah, so really nice, yeah, really nice paper. And then we've got the... An ST bright white. Yes. And that's a firm favourite with a lot of our customers um, for, for artwork reproduction. It's 100% cotton rag. Um, so it is a real true piece of quality. It's a 315 GSM. It's very sumptuous and feels beautiful. Um, and bec again, because it has that high white point, it's great for punchy colour mm. and it's, it's great for deep blacks. It is. It's just, it's, it's a lovely paper. I, I almost, it's my. I want to say it's almost my go-to paper, mm. but it's almost my fallback paper as well. If I'm ever having a tricky image or something and I'm printing it, I always go to NST Bright White because I know it'll work. It's, and it, yeah, it's reliable. it just works. Yeah. Um, if you want a kind of lovely cotton-based paper, fine art, um, it just does the job. It does it absolutely fantastically. And I think it's probably it's, our most popular art paper for that. Yeah, reason. it is. It, it just... Yeah, we, we always kind of experiment with other ones and when we're printing in the office and things like that. But more often than not, we we, we do a bit of a circle and probably come back to NST from, Bright yeah, White, we, to be we'll, honest. We'll come back to the same page. Um, so. And for illustration things, if you've got those bright, punchy colours, because that white base, it will just pop off the page yeah. and look absolutely fantastic. The blacks look so deep in here as well. It's also how it handles the ink as well. Traditional yeah. matte paper, ink can start to sort of pull slightly if you get really close with a loop. But the NST bright white, it handles the ink beautifully well. The ink hits the paper and doesn't move, so it retains that mm. sort of sharpness detail on those fine lines, which I think is really important. It's like the lines are here as well. It's just kind of it's, 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 it's beautifully crisp. And then the final paper we'll come on to is the natural textures. Yes. 
bright white. Let me just grab her. Which again is a 315 GSM, uh, but it feels stiffer again because it's, it's an alpha cellulose paper. It's, and it's got this beautiful texture to it as well. It's, it's got some cotton rag content in there. I think it's about 15, 20% and the rest alpha. Um, but as Tim says, that texture for certain kinds of work, that sort of watercolor mm -hmm. look, it really does leap off the page, doesn't it? And it does have that, when someone holds it in their hand as well, just because of that little bit of texture, it has a, that wow factor yeah. again. Um, and that's really the big difference between the NST Bright White is it's nice and smooth paper, whereas this is a bit more... It's got a bit more got, stipple about yeah. it, isn't it? A bit more, more like a watercolour paper, isn't it? Kind yeah, of an extra exactly type that. of paper. Um, but holds detail beautifully. I mean, it's held all the, the lines and everything fantastically. Yeah. Again, that white, um, that white base. I yeah. think. We keep going back to having that white base, I think, in, in the majority of cases for illustration work, a white base, I think, is quite important. Um, I what? think it just helps kind of manage expectation between screen and printer a little bit yeah. more, or a little, it helps a little bit better to, to do that. Definitely. Um, if you think your screen has got that white projected light coming through the screen. I mean, there's always going to be a little fall off, but usually we say that prints will come out tiny little bit darker yeah. because of a little bit of fall off because of viewing conditions and things. Yeah. But generally a high white point of paper um, will, will help a lot, especially Definitely. in matte papers. Yeah, and we should probably mention that all of these papers are available in numerous sizes, A4, A3, A3+, A2, and then roll media as well, but also cards. I think all of the yes. papers we've discussed, bar the luster, are available as a photo card. So we do those in uh, A5, A6, 5 uh, by 5 Yeah, the square format, yeah. And they come pre-scored with envelopes, with envelopes as yeah. well, and you can print them in. Yeah, most printers we've got. Uh, templates for Lightroom and Photoshop yes. online, so you can just download them. And it's just another revenue stream. Obviously, yeah. if you're selling your work as art, as, a, as, as prints, often uh, photo cards go down an absolute storm as, a, as an additional side revenue. So it's worth mm. looking at the photo cards, isn't it? Um, so the Matt Ultra and the PF Luster are in the photo range yeah. of test packs. And uh, I was, well, yes, was going to say anything the, else was in the smooth, oh, but the yeah, natural texture yeah. bright white, yeah, that's in the texture. That's in the, the texture the dark pack, smooth, yeah. and the NST bright white are in the smooth. Matte yeah, that's the fine art matte. Um, we should also say that all the fine art papers that we've talked about are Art Shore approved, and that is a scheme from the Fine Art Trade Guild. Yes that approves materials, basically means they're perfectly archival, so you can sell them as fine art or G-clay prints. Um, and we do have the certificates of what we can email to you upon request. That's a real selling so, point, isn't it? Yeah, it, and they, definitely. It, it gives you all your customers uh, that peace of mind that they are buying a true piece of artwork that will last the test of time. Um, as long as you're using pigment inks, of course, yeah. uh, which we'll, we'll obviously mention in the print video. Pigment inks are quite crucial for offering archival factor with your prints. Mm. But yeah. So that pretty much covers, I know. covers the papers, doesn't it? I think so. And I hope that's kind of helped you. And we don't forget, we are always at the end of the phone as well to yeah. help you along the way. If you wanted to send us any work and we could have a look at it, just drop us an email. We are more than happy to help. And also that free profiling service as well that we can hold your hand through and kind of help you to get those great colours coming out. We've done it for a lot of illustrators, so we kind of we we, we know the process now, don't we? We kind of know what yes. everyone, hopefully, everyone's looking for as well. Yeah, um, I mean, we, we've worked with a number of illustrators uh, from from day one in terms of assisting mm. with which papers and printers, right up to them being very successful businesses using a multitude of wide format machines. So um, there's, there's great opportunities for, yeah. for illustrators in the market to, to get their work printed and do it themselves because you've got more control um, at the end of the day. Yeah. So, like I said, I hope that's been really helpful. Um, I know I've learned a little bit from Vince today, so that's good. So, um, so as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel um, for all our weekly videos when we release a new video every Thursday. Also, don't forget to sign up to our newsletter for exclusive discounts on some of the papers we've mentioned here today and also all the news from us here at Photospeed with printer deals and things like that from all the manufacturers. And also, don't forget to download our free ebook 
uh, called The Art of Printing, which will give you a hand to actually start to print on these lovely papers as well, and covers everything from turning on your printer to framing, book mounting, bookmaking, and kind of everything in between. Um, so well worth downloading. You just go on photospeed.com and just click on The Art of Printing. You pop in your email address and you can download it. So on that note though, we'll see you next Thursday. See you next time.